Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. Most all airbrushes today are double action internal mix. That means that the material enters through the main body of the airbrush. Both air and material flow are controlled independently by a single trigger. This arrangement allows for maximum artistic control. However, a good part of painting scale models isn't necessarily artistic. And in fact, depending on the subject or the style of modeling, some modelers find that a more simple single-action airbrush better suits their needs. With a single-action airbrush, the air and paint flow are triggered simultaneously. The amount of material is controlled with a separate adjustment. Unlike double-action airbrushes, single-action airbrushes are manufactured as external mix or internal mix. This refers to whether or not the paint enters the airbrush body before entering the airstream. And to keep this terminology straight, External mix doesn't equal single action. While it's difficult to engineer, it's possible to have a double action external mix airbrush. This Pache AB shows the ultimate lengths that were taken to build a finely controlled external mix airbrush. And while it works about 50% of the time, it's a finicky design that's fallen out of favor with all but the most die-hard romantics, and it hasn't been manufactured since the 1990s. So with that interesting bit of history aside, let's take a look at what's available in this century. Undoubtedly, the most popular single-action airbrush of all time is also manufactured by Pache. It's the Model H. My first airbrush was a Pache F, and then I added the H. And these were all I used for years, so I can understand why some modelers are so stuck on this airbrush. It's based on an antique design dating back to the 1800s. The simple construction makes it less demanding to maintain and reasonably rugged. The head of the Pache H is made up of three large parts. A look at the needle and nozzle will explain why you rarely ever read about Pache H users having problems with clogging. Here's a number three paint nozzle from a Pache H. Now no one knows how large the number three is, only that it's larger than a number one and smaller than a number five. Here it is next to a 0.5 mm nozzle from an Awada Eclipse, and a 0.8 mm nozzle from an Awada LPH-80 miniature spray gun. Small wonder why it rarely clogs. When compared with the other two nozzles, you can see that the Pache nozzle is basically a fire hose. However, let's take a little closer look at the head design. An airbrush works by forcing air pressure through a constriction. This causes the air to be accelerated and it's known as the Venturi effect. The faster moving air creates an area of low pressure that draws the paint from the color cup into the airstream. This is known as Bernoulli's principle. The closer the entry point of the material to the area of maximum acceleration, the better the atomization. With an internal mix airbrush, the paint enters parallel to the airstream right at the exit point resulting in maximum atomization. The Pache H places the material entry well in front of the air exit point. Here the airstreams begun to slow down and expand, resulting in less than optimal atomization. Combining the less than optimal tip position along with the siphon feed design requires an even greater airflow to draw the paint into the airstream. And it should come as no surprise how much more coarse and how to scale the surface texture is with the Pache H when you compare it to an internal mix airbrush. For modelers who prefer the simpler design and operation of a single action airbrush, here are a few of the better known alternatives that offer improved atomization of internal mix with single action operation. The Badger 200's been around for a long time. It's a very simple design. Adjust the material flow with the rear screw and you're ready to go. While I've used the 200 and its double action version, the 150 for years, I was never very impressed by the performance and the head is less than robust when it comes to maintenance. The design of this entire series uses a combined air cap and tip guard that Badger calls the spray regulator. Rotating the spray regulator modifies the airflow over the tip but the execution of the design lacks precision, and I've never found it effective or useful, except for back flushing the airbrush. The fixed tip guard limits how close you can bring the needle and nozzle to the surface of what you're painting. 
Cutting this portion down proved to be a failed experiment, as it seemed to degrade the atomization. Pache also makes a single-action internal mix airbrush based on a version of one of their double-action designs. The SI is a single-action airbrush that uses the same Millennium body form. These all share the same head as the updated Venerable VL series, which uses a self-centering nozzle that I prefer for maintenance, and they're available in industrial sizes like the H, but it has an air cap with a built-in tip guard just like the Badger. Experienced airbrush artists typically remove the tip guard so they can get close into the surface. It's the key to a sharp line. For our modeling purposes, just about any quality airbrush with a nozzle size of 0.5 millimeters or less will produce more than adequate edge sharpness as long as you get it in close enough to the surface. In fact, let's back up and take a look at the Pache H. How many times have you seen nicely done camouflage patterns produced with this airbrush? You ever wonder why? A look at the head profile explains exactly why. The needle and nozzle actually protrude slightly in front of the tip guard. This allows you to put the business end nearly in contact with the surface. The secret to getting a sharp edge or a finer line has more to do with proximity, and then you need to adjust the air pressure and material flow to accommodate how close you are. You can clearly illustrate this concept with the Pache Flow Pencil. Here you essentially have a double action airbrush with no air pressure, and you place the tip directly in contact with the surface. In contrast to the Badger 200 and the Pache SI, the Iwata HP SAR is a much more contemporary design, and it offers all the performance of a quality double action airbrush combined with the simplicity of single action operation. It's my favorite single action airbrush. It has a nice heft and feel, and the material adjustments controlled by rotating the handle. The SAR is normally supplied with a 0.5 mm needle and nozzle, which is ideal with the bottom feed, but Iwata does make a 0.3 mm conversion set. The tip guard's removable so you can get tight into the surface. There are two other single action airbrushes from Iwata that have an unusual design. These are the M series revolutions, the M1 and M2. The same basic design seems to have appeared as a generic offered by several companies. The odd design's a nod to some airbrush artists who remove the handles from their airbrushes. These two airbrushes have the benefit of gravity feed, but the ergonomics of the design are so different, I highly recommend you try it before buying. So in the end, single action doesn't mean single choice. There are other options besides the Pache H that are just as reliable and trouble-free, but provide a better surface finish. I hope you found some of the information useful. And next time, I'll be discussing some of the specific features and choices of the many double-action airbrushes that are available today.